Hey, I'm Sean Canungo. This is another episode of Dangerous Ideas. We break down concepts and frameworks that will change your life. All right, this is another episode of Dangerous Ideas. And actually, we're going to be switching in this up a little bit. You know, normally in the episode, we talk about dangerous ideas. I break it down into different concepts. But this is, you know, we're throwing out the entire playbook. And I brought in, uh, you know, three guys that have been on this pod for a very long time. Just to chop it up, we got Navin. What's up, yo? <laughs> we have Mo. Hey, what's up going on? And we have Adam. Now, I think this is good This is good for us to chat, right? Because we, we're actually in this amazing space, beautiful space. Mm. We're still trying to figure out the design. Well, it's mostly on me to figure out what the design of this looks like. Talking about this is great. And, 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 and um, <laughs> I, I actually want to have a real conversation because it's like, what are we, what are we, what are we doing here? What, what, like, are we, you know, we're, we're a couple months into this. Mm. Are we achieving what we set out to achieve when we came together and created a group chat that's called mm-hmm. The Entitled. And I, I think having a real conversation on camera is good because it yes. will push us and also just like, we'll get some more clarification. Public accountability, man. Public accountability. <laughs> yeah, so what go. are we doing here a couple months in? How do you guys <clears throat> feel the progress around content? This, this, was, this was about content at the right. end. Here's, how do we think we're doing? Here's the funny thing. So I'll talk about from my perspective personally. I was very... Uh, my main motive for, mo- I think motivation for being here was community and, and you guys. And here's, here's, the mo- here's the funniest thing about what happened. In like finding and brainstorming and collabing for the space like this, Mo and I are together more. Mo's in my office and I'm like, I want a studio in here too. Boom, sets it up. Yep. And now I'm pumping out a ton of content. You are from, a machine. From he my- does, He makes a lot of <laughs> A lot. From, from my my office studio that's there and so that's been really interesting and so i got the desired result i'm not in this space as much as i want to be but we're i think we're going to fix that with uh neil name name tbd our 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 one man (laughs) camera band (laughs) but but i think that uh that was like funny enough mission accomplished not because of the space but because of being here and brainstorming and it's all about who you're with right right the execution the idea is 10, 15% of it. The execution of that idea is where it's at. And collectively, I think like, you know, for Mo anyways, I was like, yo, what's this? He's like, let's meet. Same thing with this one man camera. It's like, hey, let's meet about this one man camera band, roll it it's, around. <laughs> it's like the unintended consequence yeah. of being in together. It's being not together, like yeah. directly what's happened. And I know like there's been other sort of synergies that have happened. Like I know just, whether it's chopping up with you a little bit more, you're, you're coming on Friday, we're doing this cool thing, yeah. uh, you know, in this airport hangar, you know, with Brown Ballers. Like, I remember, like, you were in here having a meeting around ball, Brown Ballers. You're like, yo, yeah. we need, like, sponsors. And I was like, yo, like, how do we, how, do, how can I get He literally threw down it? a check that in, like, in this meeting we had. Hey, I need a sponsor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was like, yeah. yo, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you guys. And then we did it. Yeah. And, and it was dope. And I, it was so super. And that was just, like, the collisions. See, you're talking about, and this is back to, like, not to bring up the uh, pandemic, but when everyone moved away from the office, I was steadfast. Like, no, 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 no. We were out of the office for three months only. And we were back in the office yep. full time. And uh, it's because of those accidental conversations that you're talking about, those water cooler type of like, mm-hmm. you're never going to flip up a Zoom call, be like, yo, Nav, you need any sponsors? And you're not going to be like, yeah, hey, Sean, I'm looking I, for cash here. Exactly. Like, you happen to hear the conversation. You happen to be like, hey, that makes sense in my mind. And then boom, yep. throw down. Yep. And that's what makes sense. It's totally accidental. Never going to plan that. Not in a million years yep. can you plan that. It's because we're here, energy in person, 100%. rocking it up. Yeah. What do you guys think? I also want to say too, like even us, like I feel like he's building everyone's studio. <laughs> like even the one where he, like he literally just helped me put up fourteen more lights, which you can see there. Like it's it's coming together nicely. So That's I feel like lights, man. Mo's like the guy in between all of us, just like, hey Mo, we need something, and he makes the Excel sheet, which yeah, he sends yeah, you the Amazon yeah. list, the breakdown. Yeah, he sends you A B options, and then you just make it. He's so good it's, at that. Like it's, it's beautiful having like. You know, you know what's the, the guys funny, around the, like the funniest part is that like you guys are machines executing and we're like <laughs> oh, yeah. the opposite. We could set up everything, make it look good, and then we just don't post anything. <laughs> so we're like so but this is part of the reason why being in this community, we are so to answer your question, yeah. back to bringing it back to that. And I know I took the seat no, right no, from no, you, no. but let me let me go first. Yeah, you please. Go uh so for us, it's been amazing to just be able to cuz like 
what you guys are trying to achieve, it's putting me in a position to also like think creatively. Like, hey, like these are sets that you're always building that can easily translate into my work, my workspace. Like, because we're always figuring out how to light things, how to do different angles. So for me, this is like a natural thing that I want to do and I want to help. And plus, like, I like you guys. So, <laughs> so <laughs> if I didn't like you, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't do it. And then, but on the on the opposite side, for us, it was kind of like we started filming some stuff, but we were and we have it like ready to post. But we just felt it was like unjust to also like because we also want to run bad films, our production. Company, company and start this new show that we want to call the Mo you know and then if I'm just starting something new and this disregarding the old thing and without having that ready as well to be like a self-sustained oil machine then it's kind of like doing it's kind of like you start something then you kill it and then you'd start something else and then you kill it and then you're never really like getting there at least that's my perspective on it you guys could disagree on it no I disagree with you <laughs> because I think um, <laughs> I think you just have to put it out in the world and, but, but and don't you think that's doing this service for me as like uh, as for my business, for my personal business, right? To be like, oh, like the last time I posted on bad films was 2020. Yeah, and all of a sudden now, but no, no one is waiting for it though. I, know. I mean, I mean, I'm, no I'm not. I've just no like one no one is well, no one is gonna wait I, for that content to come out. Correct, correct. It's not like your it's not like your subscribers on the the bad no. films YouTube no. channel is like, damn, like this is here. <laughs> no. They weren't looking for that content. It's not gonna show up on their feed. And it's like you're worrying too much about it. I'm not worried. Uh, it's, it's not about worry. Like I don't care. Like I, I actually very much believe in your perspective on no one gives a shit because yeah. like no one really cares. So posting is just posting. But I also feel like just for being at least both are pushing, not just one. Right. So I, what's the launch date? <laughs> Dude, it's the unknown. It's the state of the unknown. Which is, that's like the which weird is part. The, yeah, that's that's, that's the, the hardest thing to get over. Well, the weird part is like when you're when you're when you're acting as like the the business development, the producer, the director, the cinematographer, the planner, and you're doing all these like other things that, like in one like you know you, you almost feel like wait I, maybe I should hire more people to just like offset my things so I can delegate tasks. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. No, it's like it's like uh, when you go skydiving for the first time, does your parachute open? Like you don't know till you jump. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I don't go skydiving. Well, right, <laughs> but like like if you open your plane and or if you open your chute in the plane, like yeah. Yeah. doesn't matter, yeah. right? Yeah. Means absolutely nothing without that's that true. rush of air, nine point eight one meters per second flying down. Yeah, and that's what you're like. That's the but, that's the sticking point. So so how so how are you feeling in terms of you know being in this space for a number of different months, like putting out content and you know, where you're at with, with what we're doing here. I feel like it's good. It's just been a slow journey. I think for all of us, like even this space, like I'm still, I still don't love it for some reason. I think just cause the way we set it up, like I can still enjoy it, but I haven't like found like hundred percent, you know, I haven't found the groove yet of like, I'm, Oh, this is, I'm locking this in. I'm like, I'm going to go full on it, but I've still pumped out a lot of stuff, but I still feel like it's a learning process. And now I'm start, starting to think like, was this, did I set up the right space? You know what I mean? Or should I have used a different wall or whatever, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I just feel like it's slow. Like I'm not, I'm not happy where it's at yet. But it has to do nothing to do with you guys. It's just like, you know, it's just it, it, testing it out. I've never had an office before. Never had a space before. Right. Trying to see what makes sense and like what looks the best when guests come into. Totally. You know? Totally. No, I, and and I think you know part of the reason. It's funny because one of the things that we shared when we when we started to get in this space is it's just the funniest video it's just like it looks like a rap crew and they all have like the youtube uh you know their youtube uh like plaques there right and oh it's yeah just like right right funny thing to look back at and be like okay so are we going to be able to achieve this and and that to me is like an inspiring image so my call to action is like yeah how can we just like continue to have more synergies i mean this is dope like that we can chop up this here together good. and you know yeah. you guys have been on you know, my pod too, but like, yeah, how can we create massive action to fucking just, you know, create more? And I don't know. I don't know what we do. Like, I, I see you, everyone pumping, right? And, and, and Adam, you, like on your like personal channel, like you've been pumping, but maybe you've been doing that independent of this. Like this is, I don't <laughs> know if this was any, any catalyst for you to continue pumping in your own particular right. Yeah, like it was because I got a space that, you know, I'm not fully in love with, but that like in my, at our, at the Bitcoin Well office where I was like, hey, right, like that room. office used to be a meeting room, used to be my office coupled with like a four person meeting room. Um, kind of like my desk here and then like the couch and chairs. Now it's just a studio. Like yeah. that office is, it, no one goes in there other than me to film and I don't even work in there anymore. So it's funny <laughs> how, how it like, this was the, cat because there's no chance I'm just calling up a random 
you, you know, yeah. what would you call yourself? Studio expert, like <laughs> film, <laughs> film pro yeah, like room to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to come in and, and help with that. So this is the catalyst. And then but, stuff like this is what I feel like this for me is more the push yeah. than, than the pull. It's like, hey, got the space. You know, like the financial piece is like, you know, it's it's there, but it's more. I feel like the accountability, like, hey, like, you know, haven't seen you in the studio. What's going on? Where are you at? Yeah, and that's I think. Well, we see you. You definitely, you you definitely, you know, pumping, and it's been it's been amazing. But uh, to my question is like, how are you guys measuring success when it comes to it, to this space or like mm. content? How are you measuring success? What is the uh, metric that you are looking? What is the one metric that you are looking at? Output for me, That's man. A, output, just output. straight output. Straight output. I think at the end of the day, my content, like it, I've been in and out of this content game for, it's crazy to think, like seven years now, which is insane. And I've noticed that when I have a high level of output, my fun increases, my enjoyment increases, mm. my like creative like style and spirit increases, and then the like the dopamine of the followers and the comments and the interaction kind of comes like there was a point where i was uh vlogging like almost daily and then we went to a fight and there was people in the crowd that like i vlogged the fight from the day before and they like recognized me they're like hey i saw your video last night like let's get a picture whatever and i was oh, like whoa that's sick this is crazy like I'm, <laughs> you know like this that's insane and then like, i was on an Oilers game a few months later and some guy was like hey adam like what's up i watch your videos wow. and i was like whoa my buddy was with me that's so that's just like side that. that's he was the like, great he was like he's like i cannot take your ego going any higher like <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can't believe this interaction right now. And <laughs> that's insane. And so like, but that was at peak, peak, peak. And then like dive into the business, you know, dive into Bitcoin. Well, put that same energy that was going into content into the business. And look what happened there. Output on Bitcoin. Well, goes up. Wow. Business like quintuples. We go public, you know, new investment, new team, new products, like all that kind of stuff. So it's all about output. And a little bit to what you're saying earlier, like where's your attention gonna go, right? If your attention goes away from bad films and into you know, your content, then maybe bad film suffers if you don't have the, but finding that balance between the two and, and having the output here and in the other spot is gonna be where the key is. But yeah, for this, for me, it's, output. it's just it's output. That's inspiring. That's a really yeah. good way to put it. Cause I was, trying, you, I was trying you? to think of a way to quantify, but output is actually it's why we're here. It's you have control of, man. It's all you have control of. I go back to like what you always say, content creates luck. And if, if that's the only thing I believe in, then all, all that matters is output. Yeah. You know, nothing else really matters, especially when we're paying rent to be in a space and spending thousands of dollars, you know, to put stuff up. It's just like, how much can you put out that's good Yeah. that people are going to see? Totally. Well, what, what's the metric for you? What, what, how are you defining success in the content space? So I'll, I'll give you an example of this. So like I started doing stuff with, with my wife, Ambika, and content creates luck, right? So like started put, putting stuff out. Oh, people like it. People are commenting on it. And I was like, Am, let's do more. So she's bought in now. So nice. now we're doing more. And we've like gone to the point where like, I say content creates luck so many times because like you never know who's watching your stuff. Yeah. We started getting messages from people that are like interested in brown people and then South Asian couples making content. Wow. So like now. Though, niche, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Like now through that, we've like, in the last like month, we've like basically pitched two different companies what? with ideas for shows for us. Oh, wow. Like, and like now we're waiting for that. But that's all just from a random thing of like us filming on the black wall here. Black wall. It was, a, it was a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying we, that. We, <laughs> I'm just saying that. These guys want basically the backstory is, I'm just is that saying, he didn't everyone, everyone, everyone is, is, is in here. everyone uh, dislikes the fact that I painted this white. But I asked, <laughs> no. I asked everybody, hey, do you guys mind? Anyways, go ahead. Yeah. So what I was going to say is like one day I, I texted you guys like uh, two months ago. I was like, hey, I'm coming to use the studio. And, and you were gone with Neem. Uh, and I think you guys have taken two cameras. There's only one camera here. Yeah. And there was this wall. So I turned the camera on. We filmed it. We filmed like six videos. And like those were the videos that like had got the views or went like one went did yeah. on TikTok. And this guy, these guys saw it. Wow. It just makes you think like, you know, it's just so random. You never know what's going to happen, but we just pumped it out. And then from there, we've pumped out like four. We made like 50 videos together so far. Like a wow. lot, a lot haven't even come out yet, but like we just stacked them and sent them to people. And it's like, oh, this is dope. That's but like amazing. now when you say output, that's cool. Cause now I'm doubling the output with a different person. Does that make sense? Like what's like, it's more like the same. same yeah. Also, so it's cool to see that. Yeah. You know, it's like, a you know, it's interesting. Like, uh, yeah, I, I believe in Elpo too, but obviously content creates luck for, for me. I think the way that I measure is obviously on impact, like people met, you know, even if 
whether it's like I post something on LinkedIn and somebody's like, oh, like, you know, this changed my perspective mm-hmm. or I start a new mm-hmm. project, start a new job. Like to me, I'm always looking at uh, impact at the end of the day because I feel like the content that I produce is very much, whether we're doing a keynote or here, it's like a very, it's a, it's a small minority of people, but it's a people that, that are like a very um, important group of people, people that are ambitious, people that want to like, they make, they want to make a dent in the universe. So like that to me is important. And the other metric, which is like important to me, which I, this is why I'm not fully satisfied with obviously the setup because we haven't really set it up yet because we're waiting for the couches and everything like that. But, but uh, I always look at something and I'm like, is this like beautiful? Do I feel fucking, is this beautiful? Is this aesthetically beautiful? Is like, is it just, do I feel good about it? Because then when you, when you feel good, when something is good, I'm more likely to post it. Mm-hmm. Like I remember like, even like I was in RJ studio, um, I'm chopping up with another person, Eric. It looks, it, it looks so good that I was like more willing to share it. Definitely. And I feel like when we have people on the pod and it's literally aesthetically just beautiful, people are more willing to be like, yeah, let's, 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 let's put it out. And that's why I always go back to how do we make it fucking feel yeah. amazing that that to me is super important it's another metric that i always look at yeah part of that too though is i think our human like we just like new things right, right. and it's like we're used to this we've been here two months or three months or how long it's been it's like ah old like what you're saying about your setup i come in i'm like oh that's so sick like <laughs> i wish i had that i got one in my office it's like oh wow that looks you know like it's yeah. just it's just like what's new and what's there it's a little bit of like the rat race that probably we're in and, and this game especially this is the rat race like this content game i heard a stat i was listening to a podcast he was saying that uh songs like because of spotify songs are changing because you only get uh, credit for a listen after 30 seconds so musicians are now putting hook yep uh in in the front 30 seconds of a song rather than like going through a core or going through a verse and then a chorus. So i was like oh hey that's interesting and then he said everything or you get extra credit when you listen to a song the whole way through so songs are getting shorter and shorter and shorter right. because <laughs> because of the incentives right. that are behind the song so we're right. a song like i remember like like eminem songs five six minutes long yeah it's like, long ones yeah. like normal yeah, right like yeah, yeah. you know four and a half minutes long for that now songs are averaging like three minutes or less yeah i recognize that on the on the sean mendez justin bieber one the the monster song is like i think it's like two minutes and 57 seconds i was like dang that's super short but the hooks right up front because they wanted that spotify yeah. juice they wanted that extra revenue to come through so it's like how are we incentivized and then this how are you incentivized it's, it's that same thing it's like What's the hook? What's the first three seconds of engagement going to look like? How's it going to look? How's it going to feel? Does it get shared? And so it 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 can kind of be a bit of a rat race and a bit of a of a double edged sword there. If you know you can play it, the game it, and you can win, but yeah, it, it certainly is a game because I believe that if you want to build trust at the end of the day, which we chatted about before, I think actually deep, long form, meaningful content is actually where you create trust. Because yeah, yeah. you can you can create a 30 second hook or a video or a song but are you are people actually fucking with you at the end of the day or are they just looking for the next 30 second Dude, thing that's my my vice right now is what's my long form i'm pumping out these short videos because i have a thought i read it in my notion file and then i open the camera and just speak but what's my long form how does the audience yeah. see my personality yeah. my my convictions my beliefs my yeah. struggles how does that come through it doesn't come through in this 45 second video no chance you need that long form strategy yeah. but then there's no dopamine behind the long form right it's like 24 hours in a day if you got to film something what are you gonna film? The thing that gets the views or that doesn't? Right. You gotta have a low time preference and be willing to sacrifice. Like it's a long term game, man. Years, man. It's it's, yep. it's yeah. years before you build a meaningful following. And 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 you know, in the games, like yeah, it's just interesting to see how quickly podcasts took off. Is that gonna be sustainable? Where is that gonna be in three four years? Like, let's think about twenty twenty seven. Where is that gonna be? Where is this format gonna be in in three or four years? It's it's an interesting thought exercise. I was just going to ask you guys, you just asked it, but what is your guys' answer for that? So I was going to say in the next 10 years, mm. is it more short form or is it, you think long form will still be around in no, 10 I years? Think, I think, I think short form will always mix up, but long form is going to take the case. Like you think yeah. about what's a podcast is basically like a, a mini docu series. It's a, it's insight into someone's brain in some way, shape or form, usually from the first person perspective. And that's been around for decades. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not going I, away. I, short form. Like look, think about what did TikTok take off on? Dancing. Who's opening up a video right now 
with like some kind of arm movement and a, and a dance, right? No one that I'm watching, right? You don't see Hormozy sitting on a couch opening up <laughs> right. with a dance because that changed like fast. Totally. That, 24 months, gone erased i and i i think the, the the game is so early still like i yeah. i think the ma vast majority of people they don't listen to podcasts they don't listen to long form uh, interviews on youtube and i think that it's still very very early like i remember back in like tw 2015 they're like yeah start a podcast I'm like ah oh, it's over done yeah it's over done like <laughs> uh cereal it's no after that. cereal came out like it's it's done right so i think um I don't think people realize the impact of this even in 10 years. Like, it's still going to be nascent. We live in a bubble, right? Because we do listen to podcasts, right? But I don't think many people, yeah, do. I and think, I think there's a, there's a differentiating factor of how do you stand out? How do you find your own voice lane? I was watching a video by Gary. He was saying that if you're in 2023 not having a podcast as a content creator, you're you're stupid like you need to be doing it. and he's like he's more interested in the ideas that people for example would have uh, his in his company 137 p.m i believe it's called uh to have like cereal while you're getting your podcast done so it's called cereal entrepreneur and then mm -hmm. that's the show he's like he's like i'm interested in having someone like brushing their teeth and like like fl like flushing the day out or, or flossing the day out and then that that's the podcast kind of like hot wings <laughs> you know how you have like that kind of show yeah so like that that in itself is more that's kind of differentiating yourself than just like how everyone is doing it get a nice looking studio get some good lighting and then do that I still, though, believe that going back to your question about measuring success, yeah. for me, it's about meaningful conversation. I don't care about the output. I don't care of like if I pump out 100 videos or one video. If I'm actually not enjoying the conversation I'm right. having or actually the valuable thing that I want to talk about and put it out there, then there's no point of me putting it out in the first place. Yeah. So for example, like the show that we had with you on yep. is that we're deconstructing of how to create a special. Because yep. when I actually went and looked up of how to create a special, there was not a single piece of information online on YouTube, which is usually the source of information that I go to. It's kind of like a university that you go in yep. <laughs> and find information. And I was like, wow, there's not a single video. That would be a cool video to create for the guy who literally <laughs> took a bet on himself and actually helped, like gave us the opportunity to help him create it. So like these conversations to me are more useful and that's kind of like the lane that i want to double down more on the concept and ideas that that potentially could like garner i mean I, I'm it's not, value you're actually creating yeah, like, value like you're that. creating value not just for like i'm like i'm in a way like l teaching myself and others by talking about it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, it's, it's not really just for the people and I'm not, and if you want to subscribe, great. And if you know, you find it valuable, you don't want to subscribe, great. Like, yeah. I don't really care. Like the idea is that this is, you're doing it for yourself and for others. Uh, and yeah, and then the third thing, going back about like when you, like the new shiny thing that you see, you know, you're like, wow, I like that. I want to get that. But like, the thing is, is that when you're when you're just passionate about the subject, it, I think it doesn't really matter what the look is, because like you, the, the 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 story will will translate no matter what. For example, the Burger Baron documentary that we did, and when we played it at Hot Docs, I went and saw some other documentaries. Millions of dollars of budget. You look at that production and you're like, holy shit, this is a fucking movie. And then you look at the Burger Baron, and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, this is indie, this is cute, but. People still came out, sold out shows. Yeah. So the story matters, right? So if you're truly yeah. telling like something that is, is you're passionate about, I think that it doesn't really matter what the shiny thing is. However, if you if you want to double down on the shiny thing, it's literally it comes down to uh, tweaking and like kind of how we're doing in the space. You still yeah, we're just tweaking you, like every you're day. Still not you, you don't yeah. fully love it, but it's looking better every time. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So. <clears throat> This is a white empty wall. It should be busy. It should have things. It should be. It should be. In progress. Yeah. Um, if you if you go to like any host show, like you, you just look up to the ceiling, you will see like lighting. Like lighting is key to everything. Uh, cameras, like the qualities that you see. Like you want. You were talking about the shop, the, the LeBron. These guys are using cinema cameras to create some like right. like next level because they're trying to differentiate at the highest level. They have in-person audience experience. Yeah. Right. Uh, but like to me, at the end of the day, because they already have built up brand. Like it's not really like, and it's not like oh my god, look at this new thing like hot wings or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, anyways, I'm gonna stop there. That was a good rant. I, I went off on a rant. No, no, was a good <laughs> that was a good rant. I was locked in. <laughs> so, so I, I, I'm just curious where. Where do you guys think in the next five years that you're going to be or things that you want to do in the content space? And I don't know if you've thought about that. Obviously, with your respective businesses, you know, that's one thing. I'm, I'm saying in the content space, like, you know, where do you see yourself going and, and, and doing? I would just like to have my own show. Yeah. Either myself or with them. Like, just a show that it's, it's on like a platform. It's not on my Instagram it's like on a platform that yeah, has yeah. like distribution and power. Yeah. So it's being seen by people. It's not relying on me having to be like, hey guys, like, subscribe, follow this thing. And it's actually like, we're earning money. Like how we talked about those plaques. Yeah. Like I think that's going to be a quicker stage. Like let's let's get some money, some monetization revenue coming in to make, not make up for this, but yeah. show that you can, you can do it. Yeah. Right. I think that's for me, like that's my main thing right now. Yeah. yeah. I think for me it would be to unlock opportunities to create the uh, films I want to make. Uh, so, yeah. uh, kind of beyond bad films, just like what's Mo, what does Mo want to create? <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, man, I think a bit of, I think for me, it's mostly having the ability to create and inspire, get people like, I'm pretty lucky. I get a pretty cool, I've got a pretty cool job, get to build mm -hmm. cool products and I got a unique insight into into things, and I I, I want a uh, an outlet to share more of that. Everyone I talk to, um, kind of echoes that and, and says like, "Oh wow, that's such an interesting perspective. I haven't thought of that before." Like blah blah blah. And uh, I think an avenue to share more of that is what's important, whether it be through a show, short form, my own deal, whatever it might be. Um, maybe all of the above. Like I mm -hmm. I just want to. I mean, first and foremost, like. Our mission at Bitcoin Well and my mission with content is to enable independence. And I want people to feel like they're learning something, like they enjoy what I'm saying, they can disagree with what I'm saying, um, that I can learn from them and, 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 and vice versa. It's almost like feeling a bit more like a, creating like a community, some kind of, yeah. some kind of community to have people drawn in and, and yeah, just pushing me and, and pushing each other and, and me pushing them. Yeah. No, that's inspiring, man. I think I think everyone has like these different ideas and goals of what they want to achieve, and and the reason why I'm asking that question is because it goes back to the first question that I asked: is like, what like what are we doing here? Like, what how are we doing right? And if there is some alignment around our particular visions or missions, then say, how do we help each other to achieve those particular missions? Right? I know for me, it's like obviously content creates luck, and for me, it's like I I want to be able to like explore more wh whether it's like doing. A, you, you know show like in-person audience like what we did with the special but like doing that as an actual show or like creating docs or series like i i believe that we can build like a you know like a hundred million dollar content house like just like a production house like i i i just feel like there are so many opportunities in this space because you know we're all sort of unique voices and i just feel like w we can do it why not i think like I, regardless of what we all want to do we just need to do this yeah, this just has to become set because, like I said, we, I, it's great hearing. I always love hearing you speak too because it's so different. But like, you know, like if we all get in the room, we talk and we share the ideas, the things we want to do, the vision, we'll we'll get there. And if we don't get there, at least we're gonna have a lot more fun or a lot more collaboration along the way. But I think this is just step one to what you're saying, basically. Like, yeah, we have this big dream. We're paying rent for this place. We're spending. I will hopefully never leave because them taking all this stuff down will be crazy. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll literally pay yep. you hourly to come disassemble everything. But like, you know, like what is the goal? I think like we don't, I don't think we all know it yet, but I feel like for us to get there, we need this more. And I know the schedule is crazy, but like how do, my question back to you guys, like, how do we do this more? Hmm. How do we do this more? Like this, just even if, if we don't have to film it. Yeah, it's probably around like routine and block, man. Like it's like, like more agenda you know what this took us two weeks to get in the calendar yeah and then it's like we all show up at different times it's like and we still didn't what, get mazin out yeah what are what are we doing yeah right it's like yeah. are we gonna film yeah we should film today right it's like no 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 we're at the studio here's what here's where we're gonna yeah. meet. it's set up it's it's locked in here's a topic even yeah. or, or maybe not by by yeah, virtue yeah. of like you know like i do way better without prep than than with prep i'm a, <laughs> I'm a pr nightmare for that reason <laughs> yeah but like it's like it's got to be intentional right it's uh you know i thought that was a good like you know hey we're meeting up tomorrow yeah yeah but it like my calendar for me you guys should see my calendar my calendar is a mess it's an absolute yeah. zoo but it's it's my it's my lock like right when you ask me what i'm doing i have no idea i'll look at my calendar 
and that's and that's what tells me what I'm doing next. And so I think if we treat this space with more intentionality, that probably helps 100%. us. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, <clears throat> it's in the calendar, set set up. We're talking about this for this platform for this and for this purpose. What's the purpose? What's the why behind it? Yeah. And then it gets dialed in. And then it's like, hey, that worked good. Double down. Hey, that didn't work. Cut it. What's next? Yeah. You know, for me, actually, it's good. more it's more tactical, which is um, obviously like you, like and like everybody else, like our schedules are crazy. But when I'm in town, uh, you know, when I'm not busy during the day obviously i'm with the kids but if there's a moment like at night in the evening like when the kids are in bed like at nine o'clock that we come back and we're in the studio like a nighttime sort of hang like to me that is where we can unlock because during the day you know you got clients you got these meetings you got meetings right like we just have stuff during the day but to me that's a practical tactical like the nine o'clock oh, content hang dude and i had, I, I had I've, I've had this period of time where like i don't sleep too good sometimes and uh last few nights i've been like not last few nights but once in a while the hours between 2 and 5 a.m i'm just like getting up and just like doing stuff and it's like output galore like superpower <laughs> galore just like super crazy so wait you 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 did you go to bed before then yeah or? like bed at bed? like midnight or like well, around then and then just stop sleep like not by choice just like up roaming around like oh this sucks like i can't sleep and then just start I don't know, my create like the creativity at those hours is just yeah, so much different. Yeah, when no one else different. is awake, it's always the best time. Yeah, it's so weird, man. It's so different. Your body comp is probably different. Like I haven't eaten in a little while. Like I don't know, things are just different from from normal. It's just from two to five a.m. Wow. And, so this and, guy's sleeping three hours a day. Oh, no, no, no. I went back to bed, and then <laughs> okay. I, I went back to well, like from like five to like seven. You did this w a couple times, or you did? Yeah. Or is like a day, <laughs> no, a couple it's like times. a daily <laughs> thing. No, no, no. Yeah, a couple times. Like, it's not. It's not my. It's not my routine. Uh, but it's weird, man. Like. I don't know. There's so many different things that we can try. Totally. And it's like, I don't know. I actually like the idea though. Like maybe just, like you said, try it. You said, yeah. try the late night yeah. hang and see how, it, if we all like it, if we can even make it. Yeah. Probably you guys have kids and stuff too, but that could be the next one we try. Yeah. Bring the kids. The, the, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 I mean, yeah, other, put them in the, you know, the, the, the other thing I think would be really cool is it's just to share like, uh, what you guys are doing in the, you know, how are you actually, okay. You, you, you created this piece of thing. This thing, who did it? Where? Did, how did you do this? How did? How long did well, it take? What are yeah. the edits? Like break it down so that oh, yeah. we have. That's a good point, actually, because I I know I know back when even Mr. Beast was even popular, they used to have like a circle of like peers where they would share their stuff yeah. before they even put it out there. Even like look at the thumbnails, be like, oh, it's not a good thumbnail, or whatever. I mean, we don't have to do that. But I'm just saying that there, there's there's even another layer to this yeah. thing that you could technically do. At that point, you may as well stop everything else and just become a content creator. <laughs> that's to me. That, that is because, good. Because, because yeah. that, that's, that's the seriousness that they took it. They yeah. were like, it's this or nothing. They were locked in. It's like, yeah, it's like, being intentional, like, like you said, right? Yeah. We want to do this. We want to grow. Like, we're not even help, helping yeah. each other technically. Or, or you just simply you know? like, look, like, okay, so I've been posting for the past week. This is like, what, what, what worked, what didn't work? Like, what are you working on next? Like, kind of like more of like a brainstorm session. Yeah. Uh, like bounce ideas off, even though like I might not know anything about the Bitcoin thing, and like I can just give you more of like a random ideas about like a framing, or maybe you know what, maybe Adam, you're talking a little too fast. Slow it down. Maybe you're you're. you're I've never heard that before. Or, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's. A <laughs> or I don't know. You know what I mean? Like just kind of more feedback on uh, improving the whatever you're already doing. Um, just yeah. Anyways, that's my point. Yeah. I don't know if that's useful or not. Well, listen, uh, you know what we, I'm just looking at time here, but what, you know, normally what we do on my pod is, uh, at the end we do some like hot topics, like just current events, see what's, and, and just like have some hot takes around those particular current events. And, um, I don't know if you saw yesterday that Taylor Swift Travis and Kelsey. Kelsey and Travis Kelsey from the Kansas city chiefs, they like got together. And I feel like Taylor Swift is on this, She's like out of this universe now, right? Because of the tour, she's out of this universe. And the only thing I was seeing on my social media, anything that I was, yeah. everybody was talking about was that Taylor Swift was at this game with Travis Kelsey. And, you know, they went basically, I don't know where they went, but they went, they were, they weren't holding hands, but they went in a car together. They, they, they went off in the, in the, in, in the, the sunset, ether, in the sunset, just like a <laughs> typical, like Ken and Barbie situation. And, um, well, you, you, you saw it yeah. and I, I just, 
to me, Taylor Swift is like operating at a different level in terms of content and her halo, like everything that she touches now, everyone is talking about. And it's just fascinating to see. I would love to break down her team. Yes. Like, you know how Colin Samir do that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like what's her team doing and yeah. who are those people moving the needle for her? Yeah, because she's a beast. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, 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 and she's incredible because... Uh, not only for the tour, but she's disrupted so many, like she re-recorded all her songs because somebody else had her masters. So she re-recorded that. She, her movie is dropping on AMC. Like she made a direct relationship with these uh, theaters when she's rolling out her, her, uh, her own uh, movie. She's uh, even with Ticketmaster. Like she, she is a boss. Yeah, her fandom's different. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like a whole different scale. You guys know the Swifties? Honestly, the Swifties, they well, call them I, I, her fan group. I, I know the Swifties, but I'm I'm not locked into. She's laughing. Okay. So she probably she's yeah. <laughs> I'm, I just it's just because I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. I respect the artist. Yep. Uh, yeah, I respect the art, the music, and all that. But I'm just not a fan. So it's I don't know that whole world is like oblivious to me. It's interesting that she's hit this level. Like I can't think of one single thing that she does other than the music. Like you think about Kim Kardashian, who right. has like. I wouldn't say as big of a of a fandom, but she was is also like a boss, and she's like makeup, clothes, like she's, acting, she's, everything, everything, yeah. right? She's got it all. Taylor Swift is just honed in one single thing, um, exceptionally well, and to the point where she's now like I would say ninety percent of stuff you see about her is not even her. It's not organic. It's someone else talking about her, <laughs> right? Yeah. Which is like that's that's maybe two or three or four levels above in the, in that, in that fandom state. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like hitting cult state, uh, yeah. like insanity. Like, right. She, and she's going to put stuff out. Like obviously her yeah. career is her. That's, that's, that's her putting content out and output. But the stuff that we're talking about her because of like someone else filming her and Kelsey going into a, going into a limo, it's got nothing to do with her. Yeah. Like, I don't think she's, I don't think she's putting that out. I don't think she's organizing <laughs> no, that. She's no, she's not. She's not. It's just the accidental consequence of being that massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You you think that Kim Kardashian, it, you think Taylor Swift is bigger than Kim Kardashian? I I don't see Kim Kardashian crashing Ticketmaster. Like I don't see her. I, I don't true. see her touring. But like, I mean, what is she gonna do on Ticketmaster? Like music, just dude. Hits. Kim Kardashian, like she could she would sell out Rogers Place in a heartbeat, hundred percent, just to sit there and and like I think like Jordan Peterson sold out Rogers Place yeah, in yeah. a heartbeat. No, like Kim Kardashian, could Kim Kardashian good. could sell. Like Oprah came here and like sold it out, but so like, would you rather watch Kim Kardashian or Taylor well, Swift? Well, neither of them. I'd rather do something else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care for either no. of them. But like, but like, I do. I think Taylor Swift. I think if you put a gun to everyone's head and said choose one, I think they're picking Taylor. Well, they, they yeah. like Taylor is way more likable. I, I would but, pick I, but, but, but Kim Kardashian's Taylor. Halo is way larger than Taylor Swift. Like, I think Kim Kardashian's Kim, Kim, wallet is perceived to be bigger. I think the the organic halo that exists though is bigger for Taylor Swift, I would say, but Kim has more people on the payroll and more like if Kim if Kim and Taylor both stopped the money tap, was like everyone who's here, I'm not paying you any more ever. Leave if you don't like that. I think Kim would be left with less people than Taylor. I think Taylor's got like true organic cult following. That's probably true. And Kim Kardashian's like bankrolled. That's my perception. Okay. It's a good take. Wow. Uh, yeah. Comparing uh, Kim and <laughs> Taylor. That's a good question. Yeah. That's yeah. a good question. Like, yeah. who is bigger at the end of the day? Let me talk to you about somebody else who was huge over the last couple of weeks, although they lost last weekend, is is Deion Sanders. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have been yeah, seeing yeah, what I've been he's following. Been with the Colorado Buffaloes. He's been literally the story of the sports world um, over the last couple of weeks. Like, he literally took a team from that was 111 last year and has become like the national conversation. Yeah, talk of the world. Yeah. Like all the celebrities, the entire sports ecosystem is down in Colorado talking about what he is doing. And, it's, and he's not even playing the game. Nope. Obviously his kids are, are in the game, but it's just interesting. And it goes back to the thesis that, you know, the, you know, the individual is the most powerful entity in the world. And, and seeing what Dion has been able to do to college football is just fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. That it feels though like it's just part of this rat race. Like two weeks ago, the same conversations about Oliver and Anthony. Two weeks before that, who are we talking about? Like it's just like right. It's a flash in the pan, flash in the pan, flash right. in the pan. That could be it, right? Compared to like Taylor Swift, who's like forever. But like, I feel like in two weeks, no one's gonna hear about that, and it'll be something else that goes because we're just fed. This is the like the algorithm. Loop, All right? Man. The rat race. We're just, okay. That is part we're of just fed. Because there's just so much out there, right? Just, Think about at, like Oliver Anthony. Like 
you guys know who I'm talking about there? I don't know who, there? who that is. Crazy, man. So, like, I, this I is no this is the different circles that, that we're, like, we're exactly. rolling yeah. in. This, like, no-name kind of guy with a banjo saying about how, like, middle America is so screwed because of, uh, well, because of money printing. It and, was, like, the... And, for a period it was like the most watched video on youtube yeah it was insane really? like <laughs> massive come up from nothing uh he's on like joe rogan he's talking about like he's just he's oh. he's just like crazy and like i think his songs are still relatively well played but like he's gone like <laughs> he's gone <laughs> no yeah. one's talking about him anymore every tabloid had his face on their front page or on the feed or whatever and now it's now it's gone and i feel like that's just how our world works now it's just it's rat space, race yeah. Yeah. and you gotta, I, man, like going back to what we were talking about earlier, you gotta form that trust, that relationship yeah. with the community because great, you got a flash in the pan, so what? Like two weeks to figure it out and then it's gone, right? right. What's that 30 second hook? Like that's how, that's what that gets you. And it get, you know, it feels super good probably for a couple weeks, shot of dopamine to the veins, uh, and then it goes away and you're just a junkie. That, that, out. That, that's <laughs> why I think it's so hard to build brands today. Oh, totally. Because everyone's attention span is so short. Yeah. Um, you know, the I, I feel the incumbents, their brand, they're just accruing more value because everybody knows them. They have this heritage legacy, uh, you know, nostalgia that people have for those particular brands. It's hard to come up with a new brand today and just like pierce the cultural yeah, landscape. It's yep, so totally. hard. Like, you know, I, I remember I was at... Um, I was at Coke speaking to their executives a couple of weeks ago talking about like, can you name a brand? Can you name a brand in the last five years that has like, that really culturally everybody sort of knows? Like it's very hard to do. And so, you can't, right? It's yeah. like, you can say Kith or you can say, you know, and that's even longer than 10 years or, yeah, it's way you know, yeah. Prime, you know, Prime, Prime, Prime is probably. probably the closest example to yeah. anything, right? What else is a... And that's only because we live in a bubble. Like, I don't think P Prime is... My dad has no idea what exactly. Prime is. Yeah. You know yeah, what exactly. I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's just like so circles, what, right? It's so hard today. And at the end of the day, I, I think today, if you want to build something, you have to build it for the few. You have to build it for those thousand people, and then they will spread the word of that's mouth. Exactly. The true fans. So yeah. hard. Yeah, it's challenging, man. I think, though, that, is, that, is that different? Like... Our kids won't know what Du Maurier is, and the only reason we know what Du Maurier is because Mad Men's a wicked show, and and our parents smoked. Like, you know, things culturally just change, and the brands, the brands from from then just naturally disappear on like a five to eight decade time cycle. I feel like, like, what was a popular brand in 1930 or like 1910? <laughs> I got no idea. Ford maybe because they had a lot yeah, of jobs. Bobby Barker, <laughs> yeah, Bobby yeah. Unless you're like a luxury, unless you're yeah. a luxury brand. Yeah. Then the, the, and the reason why those have stuck around is because of legacy that heritage. Is, Dude, I feel like that's going to disappear, that is, though. Like, you think Gucci's still around in 21, 100%. 30? You yeah. think so? I, I don't think, think, I think, think now? I think they're so established, though. They're, they're so, like, I think it'll be impossible yeah. to take them down. Like, yeah. like, it's like a history. Like, yeah. So much. They, they have the advantage of being nothing. Like, yeah. like, you look at Blockbuster was, like, a very specific thing that they offered, which just disappeared, and they couldn't see the writing on the wall. These luxury brands don't have that same... There's just they're just air. They sell they 100%. sell the brand. They sell they're yeah. actually selling a dream. They that's, sell a dream. That, that's that's yeah, yeah. that's exactly that's it. actually you know, I and over the last I'd say a couple months, I've been like deep diving into Bernard on Arnaud and what he mm. built at LVMH and like the entire just history of luxury and it's the, the most luxury is the most incredible business in the world. But the, because it actually plays on what we are good at as human beings is imagination. Yeah. It is all, all they're doing is selling a dream. But that it's dream that. is being demonized now. Mm -hmm. Like, like wealth used to be something that was sought after. Now, if you go on the street and say like, Hey, is wealth a good thing? People are going to say, no, wealth is being demonized. And you used to have a CEO of, you know, high roller company walking around with a fancy suit on and be like, that's good. You look at like, who are the two are the top ten boys now? Like you look at Elon and Mark, they're ripping around in like jeans and a t-shirt. They're not flashing labels or anything like that. So I think that No, that's why that's why luxury has well in, in a sense, that's why they've embraced street culture, right? That's, that's why right. they got Pharrell. That's, sure. why, I got Pharrell. that's why I got Pharrell. Yeah, well, that's, that's why you Those, yeah, L they, they lead in on the art, the art the art world, essentially. Like the Pharrell and like you said, and or when they had uh, Virgil, like it was using them as a platform to 
also get on board like onboarding this that whole new people that, that never had money before and now they're like millionaires or whatever they keep pushing the brand forward mm. in a way I, like because without them without without those guys would would it be as successful i don't know i actually think my my uh my take that my unpopular take is that i believe that heritage brands will accrue way more value in the future so things that we all generally know their name will be way more relevant in 200 years because the world is so fragmented that new brands that are coming up people are like I, what is that like i don't know yeah. what that is but if you have an old name like well, a gucci or dior or like that's, yeah. you know a uh, hennessy like these names will always last and people are looking for the story at the end of the day so even over the last like number of weeks i've been like looking back and like what's like a heritage brand that like we can all buy you know, even like I've been having a conversation with like my friends. I'm like, how much does the Edmonton Elks cost? Or by the way, we would change the name to Eskimos. And, uh, <laughs> and then how much would that cost to buy? Because that is actually a heritage brand, at least locally, that actually has weight, right? You, you, you hear that it has weight. Anyways, that's, a, that, that, that's I actually that, wonder that, how much it would cost. Yeah, because there are hundreds of dollars. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say no way, bro. Like, uh, no, but it, so I just think that it's so hard to pierce the cultural landscape that having a heritage brand, it will be able to um, yeah last. And so, it's funny, but I know you guys are also building your own entities at at Bitcoin Well and in the lab, and and you know it's 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 amazing because you guys have established yourself, whether it's in the basketball space really, or the Bitcoin, true, though, Bitcoin saying, yeah. space, and you're early to do that. <laughs> but imagine a Bitcoin company coming coming out today or or yeah. another streetwear brand coming out today, man, like it's way harder than do to do, yeah, is but does recognizable actually achieve the desired result? Like I'm not gonna buy a cell phone from Gucci. I'm gonna buy a cell phone from Apple or Google because I know they're good at making. That's cell a utility, phones. I guess. I, right. Good point. Good point. Not necessarily just just that. Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. So the company, so they're gonna be good at selling. Just keep selling the dream. The, I I think there are companies that sell utilities mm. and then companies that sell dreams. dreams, right? And listen, if I need a broom, that's a utility. Okay, I'm not looking for the Gucci broom. Okay, I'm looking for that. S some things inherently have utility, like a watch has some utility at the end of the day, but it's mostly a dream, mm -hmm. right? Some most yeah. See, that's that that that's a great comparison because I'm like I'm not a watch guy. Wear an Apple Watch because it's like totally yeah. my calendar and my emails yeah. <laughs> mostly, but I don't have the desire. But I know that watches are like they're pieces, they're statement pieces. Yeah, definitely. Pieces. Sneakers, right? Sneakers are sure. Yeah. Same thing. Utility. Yeah. M and and now mostly like a dream, Dreams. right? You see kids talking about the dunks that they're getting, like it's crazy. <laughs> it, yeah. We actually in the last pod we were talking to somebody and he was like, "I'm like really into expensive watches. Like he's he wants to get an expensive watch. Or he's like really into that sort of rabbit hole. And th these are rabbit holes that like yeah, you, you we just naturally get into whatever it is, right? Street clothing. Yep. Dr these are dreams, right? And that's human nature. Like we are dreaming, right? We're Completely. all completely. And that's what luxury brands do. Or that's what many brands do, right? They're trying to tap into that dream. So anyways, it's just a fascinating conversation. Um, anything else that you guys want to chat about before we sort of close it off? Any current events? Um, hot topics? I think that's solid. I feel like there's a million topics we could all bring up. Okay. <laughs> we'll do it again. Well, listen. Yeah, we got to just do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah. Listen up, boys. I th th this conversation is inspiring to me just to see what you guys are doing in your own lanes. And every time I see shit from you guys, I'm like, damn it. Gotta, we, 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 gotta post. <laughs> we gotta post. Call sir. Let's go. Call, like, Yo, Let's go. Look out. Go. No, um, no. So keep doing what you're doing, boys, and uh, let's keep building. Let's keep building. Yes. Let's go look back at this video. And the part of the reason is that I today is my birthday. Shout out. Happy birthday, Happy by the way. Thank on you, camera. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. I turned 39 today. So next year I'm turning 40. It's a milestone year for me. Milestone. And I want to look back and be like, shit. What did I do? What did I say at 39 and what did I achieve at 40? Like, what can I do this year? And there is a bit of a rush because it's like, yeah, 40 is a day where you're like, fuck. You look back and you say, 
what did I accomplish? And I only say that because I, I met with some friends this weekend. They're like, yeah, when I turned 40, that's what they did. That's what I did too. I'm like, I've reflected on my life. So, <laughs> so uh, let's just mark this day as a, as a, as a, as a, put a stake in the ground, be like, okay, where, what were we talking about? What were our mindsets? And then let's see what happens in a year and five years and 10 years. And let's keep moving. Let's do it. All right. 10 years, boys. Dangerous ideas. Subscribe. All right. <laughs> see you later. Peace. <laughs>